Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. In each of the Gospels, the 12 disciples are listed, and every single time, Judas is named last. Remember that the disciples wrote their accounts after things had happened. So at the time that Jesus was selecting the 12 disciples, nobody knew that Judas was going to be the bad character of the story. We only know that now because the story was written after it happened. But let's take a look. In Matthew 10, verse 1, when Jesus had called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. I want to point this out that even Judas was given that power. Is that all of them? Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus, a lot of aliases, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And it's funny because each time that the apostles refer to Judas, they always got to say the one who betrayed him, and again, that's just that dig, because they're so angry, they're so salty that someone would do that to their Lord. There are three lessons that I want us to learn from the life of Judas today. Three things that we can look at throughout Scripture that I believe we need to like avoid and, and, and make sure that we make the best of our opportunities. And the first one is this, Judas had the same opportunities as every other disciple. He had the same opportunities as every other disciple. Jesus named him and chose him just like everybody else. He had the same access to Jesus as all the other disciples. He had the same amount of time hanging with Jesus. He saw the same miracles. He saw people raised from the dead. Same opportunities, yet chose a different path. I want to tell you this. Every single one of us in the room today all have the same access to God. We all have the same opportunities to follow Jesus. Every single one of us, the same access, the same opportunities. But the question is, do we use them? Do we seize those opportunities? Or do we blame others for missing out on what God has for us? Well, if someone just made an opportunity for me, if someone just, he has. He tore the veil. He gave us direct access to him. That's why the Bible says that man will be left without excuse. We all have access to God. The question then is, do we allow ourselves to be used by God? Do we allow Jesus to change the things within us that need to be changed? And yes, just so you know, Jesus knew from the beginning that it would be Judas that was going to betray him. He knew the whole time. He knew the whole time. Listen, he knew the whole time that Judas never believed in him. Judas never believed in the way. Judas was never a follower of the way. Watch this. John accounts for it. John is the most salty. He's the most angry at Judas. But there are some of you, Jesus is speaking, who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe. And who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. Let me just share this with you. G Judas was never a believer. He was never what we would call a Christian. He was never what we would call a churchgoer. He never got saved, let's say that. And he still got invited to the table. He still got invited to signs and wonders and miracles. 
That's why we can understand in Revelation when it says that there will be some that will stand before the Father. And he'll say, but we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons. We did deliverance. And Jesus said, well, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. It's possible to be in the presence of God without letting him penetrate your heart. Jesus had a Judas. All the opportunities that every other disciple had, yet he chose not to believe. Lesson number two that we see in the life of Judas, Judas called worship waste. Judas called worship waste. In the book of John, chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed Jesus' feet, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with a fragrance of oil. But one of the disciples, Judas, the one that would betray Jesus, salty, said this, Why was this fragrance not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. He's saying, why would you spend any money worshiping this God? Why would you worship? He calls worship a waste. Mary says, worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Son of God, is invaluable. It's invaluable. I will give all I have to worship him. And Judas is like, go ahead and give it. I'm going to take it. And that's kind of the mindsets today. We all have the same opportunities to worship, but do we worship? Is it a waste of energy to the little Christian side to side and worship him in a song? Is, is it a waste of time to worship God? See, you know what's funny? The Bible says that when we get to heaven, all the angels are constantly worshiping him saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. they would be bowing down. I mean, I, I believe that eternity is going to be worship. We might as well get a jump start on it now. Amen. And by the way, guys, men, I'm not talking that we have to, like, you know, dance around in church. Um, that's what I'm talking about. The Bible says to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable act of worship. Does God have access to your life? Is he worshipped through who you are? And I'm going to tell you that, that it's a worship to God when you're a provider for your family. It's a worship to God when you come home and love on your family. It's a worship to God when you choose to be in a good mood and not overburdened by the cares of life. Who you are is worship to God, and it cannot be a waste of time. Do you worship him? Do you worship God or is it a waste to you? Lesson number three, almost done. The third lesson that we can learn from Judas is this. Just because you know about Jesus doesn't mean you know him. Just because you know about him doesn't mean you know him. Just because you know that the Bible is written by 40 authors over a span of 1,600 years and you know facts about Christianity doesn't mean that you know the God, the Christ of Christianity. Judas having all the same access, seeing all the same miracles, never believed. Never believed. Let me show you. Because I had to change my philosophy. I had to change my philosophy. I thought that maybe Jesus, Judas was in heaven. And again, I don't know if he repented before his life ended. I don't know. But this passage that I'm about to read was an eye-opener to me. That although he had the same opportunities and he could have worshipped, he never knew the Lord. Watch this. Matthew 26, verse 20 when evening had come, he sat down with the 12. This is Jesus. Now as they were eating, he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. 
and they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each one of them began to say, John says, Lord, is it I? And Peter says, Lord, is it I? And Thomas says, Lord, is it I? And Bartholomew says, Lord, it is I. Is it I? Each of them. Jesus answered, he says, the one who dips his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The son of man indeed goes just as it was written. But woe to the man who who the son of man is betrayed. It will be good for him as if he was never born. Then Judas, watch this, who was betraying him. It's in the middle of it, in the act of it. He's in the middle of betraying him. Answered and said, teacher, is it I? And Jesus says, you have said it. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? And the one who's actually in the middle of it, teacher, is it I? You are my leader. You are my boss. You are my source of provision for a time. You are the one I was stealing from. You were maybe my friend, but you were never my Lord, teacher. Teacher. I went to church every Sunday. I even dressed up on Easter. I got a haircut. I got a brand new Bible. Teacher. Rabbi, Rabboni, but not Lord. See, because either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Either we have surrendered to his will and his guidance or we're in control. Each disciple acknowledges him as Lord except Judas. Listen to what I'm about to say. I wonder how many churchgoers use the tools of Christianity without actually having the Christ. How many churchgoers use the tools of Christianity but don't actually have the Christ? And this is not a condemning sermon. I'm just trying to call out today, don't be a Judas. Don't be a Judas. Don't be under the false impression that eternity is yours but he's not your Lord. But this is what we, my family's just always done church. We always go to church on Easter. Doesn't mean he's your Lord. Listen, I'm not condemning at all. That's not what this message, this is, let's call facts, facts. Let's call facts, facts. And here's the truth, here's the punchline. It's the theme of the story. It's what Judas was singing. It's what I told you was gonna come, ready? Here's the punchline of the whole message and the whole weekend. We have all been Judas. He's singing there, it was you, it was me. Put that man on a tree. It was our gossip, it was our lying, it was our backstabbing, it was our drinking too much, it was cheating on taxes. This is all in the song. It was screaming at your kids. We all did it. The Bible says we've all fall short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark. We've all missed perfection. And this isn't a downer, this is a, yeah, my life sucks. I'm such a horrible person. No, that's not the point. The point is that we have a good God. We have a good God who sent a way out. He sent us forgiveness. And the only thing we have to do is accept it. That, that's the crazy part that I miss about Judas. All he had to do was accept the truth. In a world where we don't know what the truth is, in a world that we are past the age of what's called absolute truth, we do not believe that there's absolutes. Jesus stands before Pontius Pilate. He stands in judgment, and, 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 and Pilate says to him, I don't know what the truth is. What is truth? And Jesus says, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. The gospel of a living God is truth. You can, listen, listen, don't go into eternity without the truth. This is a truth that you can bank your eternity on. And don't take my word for it. 
Don't, don't go to heaven and be like, well, Pastor Mike said, no, no, no. Know this. Know this Jesus, the one who raised from the dead. He's the only one in the history who raised himself from the dead. Victorious, conquering king for you and for me. We all have the same opportunities as every disciple. We all have the same access. We all have the ability to worship. Yet, we've all taken that for granted at some point in our life. We've taken the ease of, I'm in a, I'm in a master's class right now, uh, and I'm the only American in my class. It's Everybody's from all these other countries. I couldn't even name all the countries that all the other students are in in, in this class. And as we're having to kind of debate our theologies and beliefs, it's overwhelming to me the freedom that we have in America to worship freely, that we are not part of the persecuted church. We could worship here today freely. We can worship in our homes. We can have Bible studies. We can have people over. We can download Bibles. There's countries that the Bible app and their ability to download them is blocked in their internet providers. It's so easy to take for granted our access to God. But we all have the same Access. Watch this in Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. So one who has a right to God and the one who did not have the right to God. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Watch this. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. <laughs> Judas couldn't call him Lord. Judas couldn't call him Lord because it takes a faith to call on the Lord. Judas had a faith in himself. He had, he had faith in his ability to raise his own money and do what he had to do to survive. Jesus says, if you take my yoke, it's easy and my burden is light. If you care about what I care about, if your heart breaks for what breaks mine, it's light. There's joy, there's peace, there's patience, there's goodness, there's kindness. If you're watching online or you're in the room today and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'm going to ask you, don't be a Judas today. Don't be a Judas. Don't make the mistake he made. Having this great access to God but not seizing the opportunity. If you're online, you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord, we want to offer that to you today. If you're in the room and you've never had an opportunity to make that commitment, to make him your Lord. The Bible says with the heart, man believes, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And this is really what Easter's all about. This is really what Easter's all about. Yes, you know, we can get emotional about Mary crying on the floor and all that, and that was great production. But really, the story is in the seats. The story is in the seats. He is dead and he rose again. But today's your day. Today's your day to remember the risen Savior and to act upon that. If you're watching online or you're in the room and you need to call upon the name of the Lord like we read in Romans 10, we want to offer that to you here today. And we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you to the front. This is not going to be some kind of weird thing. We all want to be part of this story with you. So here at Family Church, we pray this prayer out loud. It goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo!
Hey, if you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you fill out one of our connect cards in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, Pastor Mike, I prayed that prayer today for the first time just so I can celebrate you. Anybody at all real quick? Yeah, I see you, I see you. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, in the back. Yeah, over here. Anybody? Yeah, I see you back there. Awesome, yeah, over here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, that same devotional is available for you from one of our ushers or our care team members. If you need prayer for any reason today, we will have care team members available. There's a connect card on the seat pack box. Seat back in front of you. If you need prayer or, or prayed that prayer of salvation today, fill out one of those cards, drop it in the offering bucket today. We will connect with you next week when we're back in the office. Uh, hey, listen, maybe you're here today and you're like, I don't really know about this church thing, this God thing. We have a booklet available at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about what we believe here at Family Church and what your next step might be. Amen. We love you. Pastor Josh coming out. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that, and you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.